So imagine for a second if you could take the energy produced by the sun in a couple of days and then combine this energy, releasing it in just a fraction of a second, sending it somewhere out there in the universe. And if someone out there billions of light years away from us were then to detect this, they would most likely see something like this. And if it was coming from many different directions from across the night skies, it would resemble something like this. And you might have already guessed what we're talking about based on the title or based on what I just described. We're once again talking about fast radio bursts. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're actually going to be discussing the strangest and the most unusual fast radio burst detected to date. The FRB that currently does not have a very good explanation and might actually create a few problems from some of the previous detections as well. The FRB that's actually visible right here. Originally discovered back in 2019, but officially analyzed and finally confirmed only a few months ago. And in case you've never heard of FRBs, well, welcome. We're talking about the biggest radio mystery in the universe. The signals coming from various directions across the night skies, only last in a fraction of a second, with currently no agreeable explanation that seems to explain all of them. Some of them seem to only happen once, some of them seem to be repeating, and some even repeat with a very, very specific sequence that has been discovered in at least two cases. But the most famous one being this one right here, known as FRB 121102. The FRB that seems to be quite regular in its appearance, and the FRB we've discussed on the channel in some of the previous videos you can find in the description. And since some of the original discoveries approximately 15 years ago, the scientists have officially identified and confirmed approximately 800 of them coming from various directions, coming from various galaxies, with many of them having extremely unique features and many of them still having no actual explanation. But I guess the best explanation is currently, well, that they're probably coming from some sort of a very powerful neutron star. And more specifically, a neutron star we usually refer to as a magnetar, the most magnetized object in the universe, that possibly contains something else around it that causes these signals to assume certain features, such as very high polarization. Or maybe it's something entirely different, and because of this, it's basically a mystery. But in terms of features, many FRBs do actually resemble one another. And specifically, they tend to have a lot of different frequencies in them. So here we're talking about higher and lower radio frequencies. And when one of the radio telescopes here on planet Earth captures one of these FRBs, the most important feature scientists usually look for is known as dispersion. With the second most important feature being polarization. And both of these features normally tell us about where the FRB came from and what sort of environment most likely formed this particular signal. But dispersion is slightly more important because it can generally tell us about the distance the FRB traveled. But what exactly is it? Well, it's essentially how dispersed the radio frequencies are when the signal arrives to planet Earth. When the signal is originally created, all of the frequencies are very likely traveling at exactly the same speed and are traveling as a single unstretched wave. But depending on the distance traveled, all of these signals are going to be traveling through a lot of different plasma. And once these signals start traveling through the plasma, some of the frequencies will actually be affected a little bit more than other frequencies. Specifically, low radio frequencies will feel the effect more strongly and very likely slow down as they travel through a lot of this plasma. With higher frequencies generally traveling a little bit faster through the plasma and not being affected by the plasma as much. And in this case, it doesn't actually have to travel through some kind of a nebula. The plasma is located everywhere in the universe. It's basically the gas that seems to be present in pretty much most of the galaxies and even in a lot of intergalactic space. And so the farther that the signals travel, the more of this plasma they'll encounter and the more it will cause certain signals to slow down and certain signals to continue going. And so by traveling billions of light years, these lower frequencies will be slightly behind the higher frequencies. And so when we actually catch these signals here on planet Earth, the resulting dispersion can then be used to determine the total length or the total distance traveled from the original source. As a matter of fact, because these signals tend to pass through various objects, it even becomes possible to study the universe in a lot of other ways by possibly analyzing the total density or by even trying to analyze the so-called dark energy or the expansion of the universe. So in other words, it's an extremely useful feature, making FRBs some of the most important signals out there. But then this paper came out and the scientists discovered something really unusual. Discovered using China's 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope, or basically the most powerful radio telescope we currently have. 
And well, first of all, out of 800 signals out there, this is only one of 24 known repeating FRBs. It seems to have repeated 75 times over a span of 6 months in 2020 alone. Or in other words, it does this, although this is obviously much, much faster than in real life. A single blink here would take roughly a few days. But upon the original discovery, the scientists used some of the other telescopes to try to see if they can identify more detail. And so they used the Very Large Array, a radio telescope in New Mexico, to try to pinpoint the exact location where all of this was coming from. Turns out it's a dwarf galaxy approximately 3 billion light years away from planet Earth. But more interestingly, they also found a persistent but much fainter radio signal that's emitted from a very similar region. In other words, something else was emitting signals here as well, and that something else could be responsible for the formation of the FRB as well. Now, to date, only one other source has been discovered with a very similar feature next to it, making this already a super rare object. But then it got even stranger. Here, the scientists wanted to discover the distance using the dispersion method I previously mentioned. Essentially, by measuring the lower frequencies and higher frequencies, they could then try to estimate the distance traveled by the light. And to their surprise, they discovered that the calculations suggested the distance was about 10 times farther away. In other words, it was about 30 billion light years away from planet Earth. Making this sort of a, a problem, because it means that either the dispersion method is maybe not as accurate as we initially thought, maybe the signal is passing through a lot of different gas that's otherwise not available in other detections, maybe this is a signal that's just passing through this galaxy and there are actually two different signals here, or maybe there's really no explanation for what's going on just yet. And because the dispersion method has been previously used for a lot of other FRBs to try to estimate their distance, it actually sort of creates a major problem for a lot of different studies. If this method is not accurate at determining the distance, it means that a lot of previous studies will have to find another way or possibly even completely revise their original data and their original analysis. But there are actually 19 different FRBs with known locations and distances determined using this particular technique. And in case of these other 19 FRBs, their distances seem to be similar to the original source of the original galaxy. In other words, it's really this particular FRB that seems to be the unique one. Or I guess the one that's causing a lot of problem. And so, what exactly is happening here? Is it because of something extremely unusual happening very close to the FRB that's causing a huge amount of plasma forming in the region? Is it somehow related to this unusual other radio source that's somehow responsible for causing the dispersion that would be much smaller otherwise? Or is something really strange happening inside this galaxy, or maybe between the galaxy and planet Earth, that's causing the dispersion to be so dramatic? So at the moment, nobody knows. But it basically adds another extra layer of mystery on top of the already big mystery of the existence and origin of the FRBs, and what's actually causing so much diversity amongst them. And so at least some of the explanations might actually suggest that FRBs are just not really the same phenomenon at all. They come in different shapes and sizes. And so right now the scientists are hoping to study the same FRB using several other radio telescopes in order to actually see what's going on and to get more data helping them identify the actual issue. And so if all FRBs are actually caused by the same phenomena, the only other explanation is that maybe it's just at different stages of evolution. For example, if these are related to neutron stars or magnetars in various galaxies, maybe the magnetars in this case go through some dramatic shifts in their magnetic field and dramatically change the environment around themselves in order to cause certain FRBs to look entirely different from other FRBs. Or maybe something else is causing the dramatic changes in the dispersion that the scientists have never considered. For all we know, maybe it's not even coming from the magnetar itself, but instead is something more fundamental that's not really understood in the universe. Once again, making this a pretty interesting mystery and something that I'm sure we'll be coming back to in the next few months and in the next few years. This mystery has been going on for a few years now and I've always been super excited to report on new studies and new discoveries. So make sure to subscribe because we're definitely coming back to this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching. Maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.